you guys are going Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you and yes you're right uh, this is a buck 110 although it's a little different than what you're used to seeing this is the buck 110 lightweight new for this year really really affordable price point on this guy and so I really wanted to check it out because when something that budget friendly comes around I think these go for like $24 uh, maybe 25 say $24.99 um, and I thought, you know, that's so budget friendly that I feel like I owe it to you guys to at least check it out because, man, if you could get a great knife for 25 bucks, why not? Now, I picked this up and uh, I've got to say, I have not been overly excited about it. And there are a couple of things here that kind of turn me off of this knife. And we'll talk about that as we go along. Um, I, I do, however, want to give some credit for the idea Right? I think Buck moving to different materials and offering it at a lower price point, I think that was an interesting, you know, a worthwhile effort. However, I don't think they quite pulled it off. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things about this knife that, I mean, there are some good things about it. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some of the, the failings. And then we'll talk about what I feel like is in an overall, maybe larger problem that we're seeing here. First off, size and weight, we have eight and five eighths inches overall, three and three quarter inch blade, four and seven eighths inches on the handle, and a very comfortable 3.2 ounces. So nice and light, and it really does live up to that name, lightweight. Now, normally when we talk about size and weight, we talk about how it carries, but as you can see, uh, there's no pocket clip at all on here, all right? And that means that you're either going to have to drop this in your pocket, which is generally what I have been doing with it, or you're going to have to carry it in this belt sheath. Now, I don't wear a belt every day, and so the belt sheath is not the most practical solution for me. The other thing is this belt sheath has this loop through, you know, design where you've got to push, feed the belt through this. And again, that's something that I'm not in love with. However, if you are normally carrying a knife in a, a belt sheath anyway, then this one is fine. However, if you're gonna to try to put this in your pocket, you run into the problem that it has no pocket clip, okay? And it's a fairly large knife. So for a small knife, you can, you can often get away without a pocket clip, but this one, does, it's, it's mediocre, okay? Certain pockets it works okay, and it depends a lot on how, how form-fitting your pants are. Uh, if there's a little bit of tightness there that kind of holds it in place, then it's fine. But in a loose pair of pants, it falls over, it flips around, it gets kind of wedged in awkward angles. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's why most people prefer to, to use a pocket clip on a knife. It just keeps the knife in a comfortable position and makes it easily accessible. Now, this is large enough that you're not going to lose it in your pocket. You're not like feeling around thinking, you know, where, where did the knife go? It's just, the, in fact, it's the opposite problem. You always know it's there because it kind of gets into these weird situations where if you sat on the couch a certain way, the knife spins around and jams into you when you try to stand up or whatever. So uh, in terms of pocket carry, it is, you know, less than ideal, although it is very lightweight, which makes you kind of want to go, yeah, I should be able to put this in my pocket. So that's my, you know, first, first kind of issue with this is, you know, it's designed to be lightweight, which is great. And that, and I'll enjoy that effort, but then, you know, they probably should have found a way to incorporate a pocket clip and to slim this down a little bit, you know, make it more the width, you know, it's, it's a good, it's actually over half an inch thick. If they had made this more the, the width of say a Spyderco Endura or something, Endura or something like that, it would have felt more in keeping with the philosophy, okay? Make it lightweight, make it slim, make it easy to carry. Um, they made this lightweight, no question, but they didn't exactly make it easy to carry. Uh, let's move ahead now and talk about the blade. The blade on this is actually one of my favorite things. So we've got a clip point blade here, a nice hollow grind, 420 HC steel from Buck, which actually performs quite well in terms of, you know, a budget steel. You know, no, it's not gonna, you know, outperform M390 or something like that, but compared to similar priced knives that you're gonna get decent performance out of Buck's 420 steel. And this knife, because of the hollow grind, is pretty thin behind the edge. So those two things combined do make this blade fairly good for the price. Remember, this is only $25. So, you know, normally on a $25 knife, I wouldn't be expecting much out of this deal. And the fact that this is actually not that bad is definitely pretty darn good. A couple little 
quality control issues here. You can see that there's a bit of a recurve, an unintentional recurve in the way this was sharpened. And if you look closely, you can see that the edge is not super consistent. All right, so a couple misses on the blade. Now in terms of actual use, the blade does work pretty well. And that little bit of a recurve, it doesn't ruin the knife by any stretch, but it does, I don't know, take away something in terms of quality control and fit and finish, all right? So the blade is about my favorite part of this whole knife. And the blade on the, on the Buck 110 has always been known to be a fairly good blade. And this one is no exception. Uh, my only issues were those couple little quality control issues, but they really, in, in actual cutting use, they're not really that noticeable. So, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take too many points off, if you will. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is lockup and deployment, and this is an area where I am gonna have to take some points off because, um, you know, the lockup and stuff is fairly typical for a buck one ten. You've got the back lock here, and it's a fairly thick lock or a fairly stiff lock spring. All right, it pops you know, into place with what sounds like a lot of authority, but then if you grab this blade and move it at all, okay, there is a lot of blade play in every direction. And that really puts me off. When it comes to lockup, um, you know, uh, the, the automatic response to this is going to be, you know, yeah, but will the lock fail? And in all honesty, it probably won't fail. Okay, I'm not expecting this to close on me or, or to be some serious risk to my health and well-being. All right, I'll grant that. However, it drives me absolutely crazy every time I go to use this. As soon as you push down, you know, it's not just downward blade play, it's upward as well. So as soon as you push into something, every time, you know, if you're cutting up an apple or cutting a block of cheese, you feel that movement with every cut. Not only that, but there's pretty substantial side to side play as well. And that just does not feel like quality. It doesn't feel like attention to detail. And so that's got to be one of my biggest gripes with this knife. And honestly, guys, you know that that's a bit of a thing for me. I really, that bit of blade play drives me really, really crazy. So, and, and, that is when it's only a little bit of blade play it drives me crazy. So when there's quite a bit of blade play, I just can't bear it. And so because of that, it probably turned me off of this knife a little bit more than maybe I would have otherwise. So if this had solid lockup and solid and, and no blade play side to side, I would probably be doing a very different review right now. I probably wouldn't have noticed maybe even some of the other issues <laughs> that this knife has. Uh, so blade play... Uh, is just not something I can deal with. And here's the thing, this drives me a little bit crazy. On the box and in the advertising, you know, it says proudly made in the USA. And if you're gonna put proudly made in the USA on something, I feel like there should be, a, you, you know, it should be better attention to detail. It should be better levels of quality than what I can buy for the same price or even cheaper, uh, but from overseas, okay? You know, that, I don't know, that really gets to me. You know, right on the box, proudly made in the USA, and then it's got pretty bad blade play, and it's got some quality control issues on the blade. And so those kinds of things put me off a little bit um, on this knife. So, you know, those are those are the biggest things. In terms of the actual deployment, uh, you know, it is what it is. So in, in terms of, you know, this being a lock back and, and a nail nick, it's a two-handed opening knife, okay, guys? And I'm not going to take any points away from that because everyone knows what it is going in and there is a place for two-handed opening knives. Maybe it's a legal requirement. Maybe it's just what you prefer. I'm not going to take points away for that. But, and so it, even if, even with that deployment method, I would have been happy to to, you know, give a, a very positive take on lockup and deployment if it wasn't loose. Finally, let's move on to the handle. And again, guys, I'm not, I'm not uh, put off too much by the handle. They went with an FRN handle, and FRN is a great material. It's very strong, it's very durable, and absolutely well suited to use in a folding knife, especially a budget folding knife. Now, the problem that I have with it is it's pin construction. Okay, so you're not taking this apart and you're not fixing any of that blade play by tightening up the pivot a little bit. And actually, when I, when I 
wiggle the blade like this, I can feel this pivot moving back and forth under my finger. So that's the thing that I really don't love. Uh, probably just a piece of, you know, there's an extra piece of FRN back here at the back, probably just put in there with, with an adhesive. Again, no big deal. And again, and I wouldn't be complaining even, okay, even with the pin construction. All right. If everything felt really good and if this was just rock solid on lockup, uh, I wouldn't even, I'd be like, okay, it's pin construction. I don't love that. But at the price point, you know, I can deal with it. The problem here is, you know, here's a knife where I need to be able to adjust the blade because it's not right, but I can't do it. All right. So that's really my only complaint about construction. In terms of, you know, feel in hand, the knife is very comfortable. And I would add the texture that's been put on this FRN is really nice. And in fact, this texturing is, you know, way more positive in terms of attraction than not attraction. I don't know why I said it that way, but in terms of traction, the, the texturing here on the handle works really well. And it's even better than a standard Buck 110 that's just totally smooth. And so there are some things that this knife is doing really well if they had just pulled it off to a level of quality that was more appropriate, not only for the name, but for uh, the reputation. And that's where we're going to get into a little bit of a problem. But before we do, Let's go ahead and get some comparisons in here. So here is the Buck 110. I've tried to find some other fairly budget friendly options. Uh, the first knife that springs to mind for me has got to be the Rat Model 1. Now this is the D2 carbon fiber version, but in the FRN version, even with the Aus 8 steel, um, this is going to be a vastly superior knife in just about every conceivable way right you're gonna have solid lockup you're gonna have a blade that's a little more robust you're gonna have nice smooth action you know and and you're only spending i don't know six or seven dollars more uh even for the d2 version all right so rat model one is certainly a knife that comes to mind uh, a little bit higher on the price point is going to be the rake 848 i mean the 865 i'm sorry um <clears throat> very lightweight in fact even lighter than this and takes up way less pocket space uh, plus you've got that very deep carry clip and if you notice here the amount of cutting edge is basically the same and you know plus you're getting contour g10 there's there's a lot that's done really really well here and so i have to say you know this guy definitely is going to be a better option uh what else have we got here so the kaiser tangram series now the Santa Fe here is probably not the best comparison because of its size, but the, the Kaiser Tangram series has a number of knives in it that would be a better option than the, the lightweight. Here's one I'm almost a little bit loath to bring in here, but here is uh, a Gonzo knife. This is the 749, and I specifically bring this one in because it's not a copy of anything else, okay? Um, again, but very budget friendly, okay? These two are about the same price. But this one is going to be significantly better given, okay, that both companies struggle a little bit with quality control. Here's the problem though. I, I kind of expect some lack of quality control from Gonzo. And at this point, I honestly expect it a little from Buck too, but I kind of feel like they should be doing a better job than they are. A couple uh, other knives here that I want to bring in. One is going to be the Victorinox Forester and the case sodbuster both of these of course two-handed opening knives nail neck knives and uh, this one especially can be had for i think about 15 dollars maybe even less and, and i would honestly take this knife over this one just because you know it doesn't it doesn't move around when i'm cutting stuff which drives me absolutely crazy okay uh, even though it doesn't have a lock i would still take it over the 110 just because that constant movement in the blade and the same with this one you know this one has some blade play downward because the lock doesn't engage properly but when i'm doing regular cutting tasks I, it just acts like a slip joint it doesn't it doesn't move when when downward pressure is applied to the blade okay guys so there you go those are some comparisons for you and now i want to give you my overall thoughts on this blade i think it's, I think it was a positive step for Buck. I think this could have been a really, really cool offering. And I think, you know, I, I was really hoping 
that they would knock this out of the park, that the lockup would be solid. Because honestly, the blade is decent, and I would and I would forgive that little bit of a recurve. Okay, no big deal. It's twenty five dollars. Uh, but if the lockup was solid, this would be a very different story. Yeah, I'm not crazy about pin construction. I'm not crazy about the, the lack of um, attention to detail on the blade, but this knife would be totally adequate and even good for its price point if it wasn't such significant blade play. Uh, and, and you know, I could probably even give it a pass if it was just like minor up and down blade play. All right, then then maybe we'd be having a different discussion here. But this is quite noticeable and it's side to side as well, perhaps even worse side to side than up and down. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the knife overall. I think this is probably one to skip for most people. Uh, unless, you know, you just you're maybe you're a collector that wants to get every single buck 110. Here's, though, the bigger challenge for Buck. You know, I think what they could, what they, what they need to be doing is, is being a little more broadly aware of what's going on in the industry and understanding that, you know, at this price point, there are knives that are, that are better quality than this, okay, that don't have some of the shortcomings that this one has. And therefore, they should have said, hey, we've at least got to match the quality of, say, a Rat Model 1. Okay, we've at least got to match the quality of a Spyderco Tenacious, which I'm not a fan of anyway. But, I don't know, it feels like this was a knife that they, they marketed because they know when this hits the shelves at Walmart, people at Walmart are going to see, you know, the Buck 110, and then they're going to see the Buck 110 Lightweight for half the price, and say, hey, they look pretty similar, I'll probably just buy this other one. They're both made by Buck, so they're going to be good knives, and they're going to buy this you know, without any knowledge of, of the fact that there are way better options out there. And so that's where I'm a little bit frustrated. I feel like when you have a name as good as Buck, you should be going above and beyond the Call of Duty to, to you know, reinforce that that Buck name and that Made in America logo means something instead of just knowing that you're going to take advantage of consumers by slapping that Made in America thing on the box and having the name of, of and having the Buck name on there as well. So there you go guys. That's my that's my disappointing <laughs> discussion of the Buck 110 lightweight. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will talk to you soon.